So now the important thing with your texture project is, number one, you know what it is. You can go and select it over here in your scene outliner and get access to its properties. The next thing is the resolution you're going to be working at, the linked material. So we've already linked our scarab material, which is applied here to our texture set. We've done our input map so our generators know what to do and what to use. And then if you keep scrolling down, these are going to be our project maps. So this is our workflow we're using, metalness, roughness here. And you can also go in here and add more maps if you need them. And this will become uh, easier to understand once we get into the layers over here. So here's our material tab, and this is our materials we have here. You can actually have multiple materials and material sets assigned to an object. We're just going to have one. And then your output maps, this is basically where you can pack things together. So when I go to export this, by default, it's going to have three. You can always add a new one down here, and you can, you know, pack whatever you want to in the RGB or RGB plus alpha here. And you can just choose, like, you know, what gets packed in there. Or if you want to split those up individually, R, G, and B. Here's red, green, and blue what you want to put into the red channel, green channel, and blue channel, or just get rid of this. Uh, but we're not going to be exporting out of here. We're just doing quick look dev in the layered material workflow. But that's essentially what you need to do first to set this up. Now, to start using the materials, let's go over here to our layers. And right now we have nothing in our scene. But if I go over here, you're going to see we can add a paint layer and a fill layer. So just like Substance Painter, you can click this paint layer. That's going to create a new fill layer here. And for this fill layer, here's all the material settings. Uh, if I want to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to change the roughness or metalness. I just want to change the albedo. You can go through here and you can turn all of these off. Or alternatively, you can hold down Alt and choose albedo. And that'll turn off all the other channels except for uh, albedo, which is selected. But in this case, we'll go ahead and leave all of these on. And you can just start making your new material. So if you want to down here, uh, you can drag a material reference into here. So we have our library doc down here. And you're going to notice we now have... Uh, materials. So if you want to, we can go in here to the metal folder. You can do a quick search like steel and hit enter. There's a whole bunch of steel options you can use. Here's steel dirty. So if I want to use this, there's a couple different ways I can apply this. One way is just take the steel dirty and just drop that right into your material reference. And it's going to load up all those properties here to get us a nice steel. I'm going to go over here to my sky and we're going to choose a little bit more of a dynamic HDRI. And uh, if we go in here to presets, you're going to see it's going to switch us immediately over here to skies in our library. Just get rid of that steel search. And uh, we can actually open up skies if there's any, you know, evening, interior, midday, morning, etc. Let's go ahead and choose a morning. Let's do a... And like I mentioned before, if you see something in here with a cloud on it, all you got to do is double click it to download it. That's going to get that little spin bar there. And then once you have that local, you can go ahead and double click that. That'll put that in your sky. Uh, also, you can sort this by first party Marmoset content. Here's your user created content. Here's all the ones you have locally stored. And then here's all the ones that are um, just in the cloud. So these ones you don't have downloaded yet. But again, it's super simple. All you got to do is just double click this. It'll download it for you. Now it's stored locally. So we can go ahead and get rid of that filter. And now you're going to see it's right in here. So we just double click this and that'll be our new sky. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to crank up that brightness in that sky just a bit. And now we have a nice steel bug. So let's go back down to our texture project here. And essentially all we did was make a fill layer and then drop steel right on here. Uh, if we want to, let's go back to our materials here. And we do have wood. So originally we did make a wood uh, beetle. We had steel arms and uh, wood on the back here. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, nothing's showing up because I don't have anything downloaded for wood. And I'm still sorting by local. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now I've got a bunch of wood I can choose from. Let's just play around with some of these. So let's take this uh, oak bark. I'm going to double click this. It's going to download it for me. And now I can just literally drag this onto my object. And you're going to see it pops up my ID map. So I can just drag it right onto the back here. And now I have oak wood on the back of my scarab. Totally cool. So now that I have this, I have a new layer that's automatically masked to just that material ID. And it's finding that because we plugged in our material ID right in here. Uh, before I get too far, I do want to mention, hey, go up here and do a file save scene as. You don't want to save over the composite Marmoset tool bag scene. So let's just go ahead and save this somewhere else. We'll call this Marmoset Texturing. And now with this fill layer over here, this material that's applied to this fill layer selected, you can go over here, you can change the tiling. You just click these arrows up and down. You can change that tiling on the fly. You can also change it from UV over here to like triplanar if you want to. In our case, it's not going to make much of a difference because if you remember, and again, if you're just joining us now, uh, we're doing some just look dev tricks, basically taking a 3D model 
baking it to a plane, but making it behave like a 3D object just for some really quick look dev without having to deal with any UVs. But if I go back to my material here and turn off our displacement map, you're going to see this is literally just a projected plane texture that looks like a 3D model. We're turning on displacement so we can get shadows. And let's go back to our main camera and again zero out these rotations here. But there we go. We'll go back into our layers. Uh, it's going to say, hey, you need to select your texture project because we have our main camera selected. So if you ever see this and you're like, wait, I have a texture project. Why can't I texture? It literally just needs you to go over here, select texture project, and now you're in your texture project. You can go through here, change any of these things you want. Every single one of these has a contrast slider. So if you want to go through here and like change the roughness, if you want to make it really shiny, just pull this down. You're going to see it's going to update in the view here as well as on your model. So here's some very shiny bark. And then here's some very rough bark. So you can go in here and change that value as well as the contrast of that roughness if you want. The uh, metalness, it's already set to zero, obviously, because it's bark. But if you want a metallic bark, which is kind of a cool look, it's like, hey, you know what? I got a metallic texture of a bark if somebody went in here and gave this metal a texture just to kind of make it look like that. Go in here and uh, change, just click and drag this arrow to kind of change that tiling here. So again, very cool look. And we'll switch that back to UV. So now this over here is our canvas, and what that's showing us is our albedo texture. If I want to, I can switch this over to like, hey, I want to look at my roughness map. And this is what our roughness is being applied to our object. If I want to see the ambient occlusion map that's being generated now, there you go. But we'll take this back to our current map. And by current, it means what you're modifying in this layer. So right now we're modifying the uh, albedo. And what I mean by modifying is if we take this opacity down right now, it's actually going to lower the opacity of everything, the roughness, the albedo, and metal metalness. However, if I go over here and break that link, now when I drop this, it's going to keep the same roughness. However, it's going to drop the albedo or the color information out of there. If I want to just change the roughness information, if I go down here and I choose roughness, number one, it's going to show canvas current map is going to switch to roughness. And since this link is broken, now when I drop the opacity, it's just going to drop the opacity on the roughness, not the albedo. So you can do it all at once. It's going to drop the opacity of all of these maps. When we pull this down, it's going to affect all of them. Or you can break this link, switch to whatever map you want, and drop the opacity of just that map. But we'll go ahead and turn that back on. And the reason it looks metal is because this layer, uh, we added metalness to it. You know, if you turn this back down, obviously, you know, go back to bark. And if you don't like this, you can just replace this with another material. So we can keep scrolling through here. Let's take this uh, lumber rough hewn. Let's go ahead and download it by double clicking it. And then let's drag this right over here to our material reference. Now it's lumber. Let's go up here and we'll go ahead and rotate this. Let's say 90 degrees. Change the tiling if you want. Again, you can always go in here and hold down shift and right click and change your lighting. You can go into your sky. You know, add a child light, move it around to select any other areas. Go down here and select the child light individually. Go up there and crank up the brightness of that child light if you want. All sorts of cool stuff. Uh, let's go back to our texture project one. Let's go ahead and add another fill layer on here. And this time we'll just do it manually. So I'm gonna do another fill layer. This one we'll just name painted. And if you want to, just go in here to your materials and there's actually paint material. Here's some paint cracked. You know what, let's go ahead and use that. Let's go ahead and take our cracked paint Drop that into our material reference. Oops, download it first, double click it, and drag paint cracked on over here. But now it looks all paint cracked. It's really cool. I mean, look at that awesome cracked paint you have in here. Uh, but if we just want to apply this to a certain area of our, ma of our mesh, we can go through here. A couple different ways we can do that. Number one, we can right click this and we can say add mask, paint, color, or fill. If we do a fill mask with black, that's going to allow us to go over here to say our textures and we have some grunge maps in here. So I want to, I can take this crack surface, drag this into our mask map. Let's go ahead and download it first. And now this mask is going to determine this fill layer that has this mask in it, which is shown right here, is going to determine where this shows up. So I can go ahead and crank up this contrast here and you see now this fill layer of our crack surface is now overriding this mask that this painted material is applied to. So that's going to determine where this shows up. So again, a very, very cool uh, look here. And if you ever want to see it all up close, just go back to classic and then I'll, you know, pop it back out here classic. So there's our uh, wood with painted cracked 
paint over it. And then steel legs. So it's wood body with painted cracked paint. And then on the steel, it's also painted, but it's worn away uh, to steel underneath. And all that is happening because, go back to our texture tab here, we have a steel that's underneath everything. On top of that, we have oak bark that I think is actually something else because we just replaced this. So this is that hewn lumber that's only applied to the beetle shell parts because we use our ID mat for that. On top of that, we have painted that's covering everything except this is controlling that. Again, if you don't like that, just click it and hit delete. You can even delete this mask if you want to. Now paint is everywhere. Let's say we just want this paint applied. So let's right click this, uh, or you can go up here to where it says mask and you can just say, hey, you know what? Let's do a fill mask with black. And in here, let's choose color selection and this fill layer we don't need. So this color selection layer is gonna determine where this painted shows up. Right now it's not showing up anywhere. So with color selection selected that we added right here, so you can choose curvature, dirt, generators. I would say color selection, add new, go up here and just choose blue. And now the painted, cracked painted, is only gonna show up on the beetle shell. Let's take this one step further and let's go ahead and add another one. Let's say, you know what, let's do uh, dirt. So now, we have dirt controlling and it's completely overriding because it's set the standard. So just like we did in painter a while ago, let's go ahead and set this to multiply. So now the dirt is being multiplied where we have our color selection and we see a little bit of painted material coming through. Let's go with this dirt layer selected. Let's change that contrast all the way up. So now paint is just showing up in the crevices. Let's take that intensity and crank that up a little bit too. Direction intensity will take the zero because it's actually doing like a ground projection. Let's go ahead and turn that down. Crank up our crevice intensity. And then under occlusion intensity, you're gonna see wherever it's white, it's gonna start letting that painted, cracked material start to show through. So we can crank up that occlusion intensity and then crank up that, crank up that occlusion contrast a little bit. And now you're gonna see where the shell is most exposed or might rub against things, it's gonna rub, against, it's gonna rub off that paint and the paint is only applied in the wood and you can also plug in another grunge map. So just like we did before, you can take like, you know, double click this dirt surface, drag that right onto that grunge map. And now this grunge map is going to be overlaid. Let's go ahead and drop that grunge intensity down a bit. Maybe crank up that grunge contrast. So again, you can see we're getting more of a scraped look. Grunge scale, you can go ahead and change. So now as I crank up that intensity of that overall dirt, we're having grunge kind of knock out some of those areas. We have contrast coming into play. So now we have wood underneath and painted uh, over top. Now don't forget while you're doing all this, you can always go back to say for like this lumber, uh, crank up the contrast of that uh, lumber, go through here, click on this color swatch and then make that you know, dumber, <laughs> lumber a little more darker or desaturated, whatever you want that look to be. Uh, same thing with the paint, you can go here to the painted layer, go in here, you can change this color. You can go in here and add uh, contrast to that paint, make it a little bit more aged. As well as if you scroll down here to the bump map, you can crank up this bump map and give the areas where the paint is. Uh, you know what, while we're doing this, let's go to our scene tab. I'm gonna go in here to render. I'm gonna turn off use ray tracing just while we're dialing this in. But you know you just come back at the very end and turn on ray tracing to get the a little bit more realistic light bounces. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and turn that off just so it's not fuzzing in and out. And then we'll go back to our texture project here. Uh, so like I was doing before, Underneath this bump, you can turn the bump down. You can actually uh, bump it in, keep it uh, relatively flat, or bump it out just a little bit. So while that paint is coming in, uh, it's adding a little bit of height to there. Now you can keep stacking masks over here. So for instance, I can take this mask, and we have our color selection layer and our dirt layer. For whatever reason, you don't want the dirt layer, you can go ahead and get rid of that dirt layer. Um, and on top of this one, you can say, I wanna isolate the painted area to the color selection layer, but on here, I just wanna paint something. So I'm gonna go through here, and I can either right click and add a mask or again, just go here to mask and say, uh, add a paint mask white into this mask. So here's our empty paint mask. So now I can go over here to like say the brush or the flood fill or the gradient. In fact, let's choose gradient. We'll choose a linear gradient. So if I just click and pull on my object, you're gonna see I can very quickly pull in a gradient or I can change that gradient to like a radial gradient, just click and pull. I can also just go in here to my brush and start painting. So when I have my brush selected, you're gonna see up here I have size, opacity, and flow. So I can go up here and I can crank up my size. This is where my brush is affecting my object. But you can see when I'm brushing here, 
number one, I'm painting white. So I'm gonna go over here to value and I'm gonna start painting in black. And this is gonna start erasing some of that paint, but it's kind of clipping through my object. Because again, I keep reiterating this, if you're just joining us, um, this is a flat plane with displacement on it. So really we're just painting on a flat plane here. So because I moved my camera, let's go back here to zero out my rotations here. So there's something we're gonna to have to do with our brush that you probably normally wouldn't have to do if you're painting on a real 3D object. And that's go over here to our uh, texture project, our brush selected. And instead of uh, in the scene view, let's go in here to tool settings. This is gonna be our brush settings here. And all the way down here at the bottom, you see, you know, you have these culling options. And you also have uh, brush alignment. So instead of tangent, I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna set that to screen. So now when I paint on this, because we're just painting on a flat plane, uh, I'll be go able to go through here and just paint black on our object. And because this paint layer is feeding into our color selection layer, I can't paint black or white. So if I go up here, if I tap X in my keyboard, it'll actually switch that value for me. So if I go through here and try to paint white over here, it won't let me. Just to kind of juggle this a bit more, let's go ahead and delete that layer. And on here, let's go ahead and put in a occlusion. So wherever, wherever it's black, my paint shouldn't show up. I'm gonna go ahead and change that contrast here. So here we, what we're doing is we're basically Wherever there's occlusion, it's gonna turn black and that black is gonna feed into this mask and it's gonna start wearing away the paint that's just in this uh, color selection layer. If I wanna invert this effect, I can go up here and I can choose levels or, I mean, you just do an invert. And now, wherever it's white, it's gonna show up. So I can go back to this occlusion layer and start wearing away that paint in the broad areas. And then on top of here, Let's go ahead and go into our mask and we're gonna do a paint mask this time. Again, with white. So now when I go in here with my brush, set that to screen. Now I need to go over here, I can tap, if I start painting white, it's not gonna do anything. If I tap X, now it's gonna start painting on top of that invert layer. So as you can see, you can start nesting all of these things. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Let's go ahead and delete these out of here. And let's say we just want to put on, you know, paint, cracked paint goes in one area. And then on top of this, we just want to paint in manually where things are going to go. So in that case, we're going to go in here to mask, add a paint mask with white, go in here to our brush, make sure that's set to screen in our case. Go ahead and crank up our size a bit. And we're painting white into something that's already white. So that's just going to add more white. However, we hit X or go in the value and turn that to zero. We can go in here and we can brush some things out. Now, if I'm using my tablet, you're gonna see it's gonna behave like a mouse. I need to go in here, uh, turn on pin pressure for size and maybe pin pressure for uh, flow. So now when I go through here, I can go very small and light and then press down and get very heavy and a larger brush stroke. Um, and if you want to, you can also go in here to, you're gonna see we're in our library over here and we have brushes and materials and stuff. So underneath textures, there's brushes and then under, underneath here, um, there's more uh, brushes, there's nuts and bolts and then organic brushes. So underneath the brushes section here, if you want, you can go down and if we want to use like kind of chip away at this paint with like a, a dirt brush, we can say, uh, you know, if you want to need to download something like dirt large, just double click it because it has a cloud next to it and then you have access to it. And then you can select one of these, let's say dirt medium. We just drag and drop this right onto that brush texture. And now it's going to cycle through a bunch of different brush textures that make up this dirt brush. And again, we still have the ability to go turn on pin pressure. So if we want to do that with flow again, just turn on the pin pressure flow and then go through here. And now you can start manually chipping away and hold on control and right mouse click to make this bigger or smaller and then drag left and right. And now when you start painting on this, you're going to see it cycling through those different textures. It's going to make up that kind of dirt alpha. So it's going through there. And every single one of these also has a, a jitter amount. So if you want to, you know, jitter the size, you can just crank that up. If you want to jitter the opacity or the flow, you can go through here and just add a little bit more randomization as well. So again, control right mouse to make that brush bigger or smaller, and then go through here and just start chewing away, you know, these broad areas that might wear away that paint. You can just do that manually with a paint layer. And now that you're pretty comfortable with how all this works now, uh, let's throw another material on here. Let's go in here to materials, paint, and we'll just use paint flat. Uh, I want this to be global. So let's go ahead and double click it so we can get it out of the cloud and local. I'm gonna just drag that right onto my layer stack here. Let's see if we can move it to the top. So now everything is paint flat. So I'm gonna go in here, add a mask. We're just gonna add a paint mask black. Now it's not showing up anywhere, but I know that if I go over here now and start painting, 
I can start painting this paint uh, on my object. If I want to limit it, so you have these uh, magic wand tools, you can go through here through magic wand and click on some areas or selection circle. So if you want to just main, you know, paint in the square area here, you can do a selection first and then go in here to your brush stroke. Let's go all the way up here to organic brushes and we'll just choose this paint worn. Double click it to download it. And then just double click it to load that brush up. Go down here again, screen space, control right mouse to crank that up. And now I can go through here and just start painting uh, within that selection square. Or if you don't want to be confined to that selection square, just go ahead and go back to rectangle, just tap off, go back to your brush. And now you can start painting in that paint. And just like we were doing before, you can go back to this paint, go in here and change the contrast. Let's make this a little bit brighter. Maybe down here under bump, we can make, add a little bump. So that's kind of, that paint's kind of sitting on the object here. Go back to our mask paint layer, choose paint. And then again, just go through here and just start painting. And of course, when you're ready to do your final render, Let's hit go back to classic view so we can see a little bit more of our object up here in the classic tab. Let's go back to our render settings. Let's open up ray tracing, turn on use ray tracing. And we're not going to get to glass materials in this one, but if you did have glass materials, you may want to crank up your bounces and your transmission. So for glass, you definitely want to have more transmission. I think after three bounces, uh, you start getting diminishing returns on the quality versus performance. So probably you want to cap that out at three, I believe. Uh, viewport samples is what's going to be like how clean that renders, renders in your viewport. However, scrolling down here for your final image or your video, this is where you change your samples to make your final render uh, less noisy. And of course, if you're going to save out a PNG, you can also turn on transparency if you don't want to get your background. Shift right click to move your HDR light around your scene here. And of course, you can always go back to your sky, swap this out with something else that's more appropriate. It automatically opens up your libraries to the sky section. So if you want to do something a little more subtle, maybe we'll do this abandoned house. Let's go ahead and load that up. You're going to get a very dark result. But remember, you can always go in here, add a child uh, light here, and then select that child skylight there and just crank up that brightness a bit. So as you rotate this around, that light will rotate with it. Uh, of course, you have the main camera available to you. So if you hit Control U, you'll get your interface items back and you're going to have that light sitting in here. So if you want to, you can hit W, E, R, depending on the light type that it is. In this case, you can just go in here to rotate and you can manually rotate that light around. You can even have it uh, selected and change it from like say directional to a spotlight. And in that case, if it's a spotlight, you definitely do want to go in here. Let's go in here to brightness. And then now you can move the spotlight around, rotate it, change any spotlight parameters like your diameter here, your spot angle, you can widen it up or narrow it down. Let's go in here to the brightness. And then again, to get rid of any user interface, you can just click off of it and then hit control U to get rid of that. And then we're gonna go back to our main camera and X or zero out our rotations here. And with the main camera selected, let's go down here. Like we did before, you can go in here to post effect, you can drop in some presets in here that might be uh, what you're looking for. That's a really cool one, a little Polaroid looking shot. Or you can go in here to default and then manually go through here. You can bump up the contrast a little bit in your image. You can sharpen, add a little bloom. You can even go in here to flare if you want to. A little bit of vignette. Of course, if you're gonna do this and you wanna capture that background, um, you're gonna wanna go back to your render and then turn off transparency. When you're all set and you've got your resolution dialed in, you can go through here again, render your image. And here you go. Your nice final rendered image for your Marmoset Look Dev Previs uh, flat plane uh, render.